Good afternoon. More than an athlete. About a decade before LeBron James made this phrase popular by marketing it on t-shirts and hoodies and sneakers, this phrase crossed my mind as I saw my then 10-year-old son and his friends playing basketball in our driveway. As they ran and jumped and talked a lot of trash about who was the better basketball player, I thought to myself, do they really think they're going to grow up to be professional athletes? <laughs> so periodically, when they'd come in for a snack, I'd ask them the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Sometimes I got the answer that I dreaded. I want to be an NBA star. I tried not to crush their dreams right away, but I had to ask that question that all adults want to ask. So what's your backup plan? <laughs> it was a valid question then, and it's a valid question now. Of all NCAA athletes, only 1.2% of them become NBA professionals. Only 1.6% of them become NFL players. When I looked at these boys, I saw bright young men with bright futures. I saw IT professionals. I saw mathematicians. I saw engineers. I thought they could be whatever they wanted to be. They obviously saw themselves as athletes. So at that moment, I had an aha moment. And I thought, why can't they be both? So soon thereafter, I reached out to my dear colleague, Dr. Lawrence Clark, a mathematics education researcher. And together, we created a program called UMD Mathletics. Now, our idea for this program was to ensure that black and brown youth could increase their interest and their confidence in their math achievement. So as we were pulling the program together, we looked at math scores for black boys across the state of Maryland. We looked at their outcomes at the fourth grade level and the seventh grade level. And there was a great decline in their achievement by 24% across the state. When we looked at that same data at a local school district level, that gap was even greater. Dr. Clark and I were a little frightened. We thought, really, how are we going to keep their interests? Boys that look like my son, and their friends, how would we maintain their interest? For us, the answer was sports. So nearly a decade later, our mathletes continue to perform well in the information that we teach them through our program, which is introduction to statistics and data analytics. We now not only look at how they perform on this content, but we also want to understand how our entire program and important adults in their lives impact their adolescent identity. And just as our identity um, research was emerging, we heard of this guy. For the Baltimore Ravens fans in the room and online, they may know him. He played football, but now he's pursuing his PhD in mathematics. He was the epitome of what we thought academic and athletic identity can intersect. So, and as I understand it, he gained this interest in mathematics right around the middle school time. Because middle school development is an important time. It's a time when they're getting information from all different sources, from social media, from TV. And all of these influences impact how they see themselves in the future. What will their career be? And we thought, What else can we do to make sure that they see themselves in addition to being just, these, just an athlete? And so during this time through middle school development, they are not only having these different sources impact them, but they're also looking for affirmation and confirmation in their performance in the classroom and on the court. During this time, their relationships really matter. They are kind of negotiating who they are, where their interests lie, as well as their peers. 
and they're also thinking about what their parents expect of them. They aren't the only people that impact them. Educators do as well. Educators believe by labeling them that we are nurturing their multiple identities. At the K-12 level, we call them scholar athletes. At the collegiate level, we call them student athletes. But if unnurtured, these students will lean into what we call in the literature athletic identity foreclosure. What do I mean by that? I mean that they will shut out any idea or possibility of being anything else other than a professional athlete. They foreclose on that idea. And so we, we realize that and we want to make sure that doesn't happen. And what we've noticed from our program is that when, they, when we teach them math in the context of sports, they actually grow confidence. They understand, have a better understanding of their academic identity, and they understand how that academic identity intersects with their athletic identity. Now, there's no wonder that these students um, want to be professional athletes. I mean, the history of our country, the disproportionate representation in professional sports, it's there. And so they see that, and that's what they want. So we kind of concur with, one of, uh, with an author, um, William Roden. He's written a book called $40 Million Slave. And in that book, he talks about and reminds us that for history, our history suggests that black people have been seen in their athletic prowess as entertainment since the beginning. He reminds us that black people were forced as slaves to be um, jockeys and boxers and to compete against neighboring plantations. The disproportionate representation in the NBA and NFL is also clear. The facts are 70% of football players are black. 81% of basketball players are black. Only 8% of IT professionals are black. And remember, only 1.2% of NCAA athletes will make it to the NBA. Now, we realize not all our youth will turn out like John Urschel and become a mathematician and get their, their PhD in mathematics. But we believe our program and important adults in their lives can really impact and reduce the possibility of them foreclosing or having that athletic identity foreclosure. So you may be thinking, what do I want you to do? Well, first thing you can do is you can Google UMD Mathletics. <laughs> when you get there, you'll see not only are we hosting this program here at the University of Maryland next year, but also at Coppin State University. So we're expanding. But I want to leave you with this. My charge to educators, coaches, and parents. You are indeed the most important people in their lives. I encourage you to relentlessly, relentlessly encourage, nurture, and develop their academic identity as much as you do their athletic identity. These two identities can and do exist. And they can be nurtured and they can flourish if we identify it early. Thank you for your time tonight.